question I often ask is, where are control charts used? Let's spend a couple minutes talking about that. Control charts can be used anywhere there is a process that repeats over time. Key thing is that it repeats over time. These processes can be in manufacturing, they can be in maintenance, they can be in finance, human resources, the laboratory, sales and marketing, and it's just not for profit organizations. It's also for nonprofit organizations as well as the government. But you always have somebody who says, you can't measure what I do, and control charts don't apply to me. Well, if you run across that person, talk to him about his problems. He'll tell you what needs to be measured when he talks about his problems. Or draw a process flow diagram of what he does. The measurements become clearer and clearer. And when you talk about measuring and control charts, remember the four dimensions of measurement. Quality, quantity, timeliness, and cost. Now let's look at some examples of control charts from our website. One example is equipment availability. This is where equipment is simply monitored for its uptime and percent of time that it's available. You can see from this chart, we have 83.9% average availability each day for this piece of equipment. And we have one out of control point on day four, a special cause of variation. Something happened that caused the downtime to be greater. Another example of a control chart is percent on time. It can be percent on time to your customers, to your suppliers, to you, airlines, whatever it can be measured in terms of on time. And this example has an average of 94.6% on time, and you can see it can't be greater than 100% here at the top. Another example is the winning time at the Belmont Stakes. This is horse racing, and this gives the winning times in seconds since 1926 to 2015. There was a change in the Belmont Stakes arrangement back in 1937, so we split the control limits there. Here you have an out of control point on the high side, which means the winning time was longer than normal. This was a very muddy track that year, very wet. And here is a time that was much faster than normal, and that was the horse secretariat in the Belmont Stakes. You can also monitor things on your own health, like blood pressure and weight. Here's some data on my blood pressure back from 2014. I had some baseline data about 127. About a year later, I took some data in 2015, and you can see its step change from 127 to 137. That's another application of control charts. You can also use control charts for saw blades. G ratio is a measure of, of how much material blades cost. You want it to be higher. Here we have 30 blades that we use our baseline data, and then we had 10 blades that we tested, and we want the in G ratio to increase. And here's a control chart that easily shows that increase in G ratio with the test plates, telling us we need to change to the new test plates. You can also do global temperatures. Everyone says we're getting warmer. Here's the data from 1880 to 2015. And you can see a series of control charts in step changes, as we've had step changes in temperature over the years. But global temperature is increasing according to the data. Here's another example for a control chart on distribution. It's percent stockouts. It's measuring the percent of time you don't have a piece uh, or don't have something in stock that you're supposed to. And you can see our average is about 3.8, but we have one week where we had an out of control point. Over 7% of our material was a stockout. Website's another way of using a control chart. And you can see here the number of visits per day to a website. And you can see a little pattern here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. A little higher, and down here are Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And that pattern continues. And so you actually have two processes on this control chart one for Monday through Thursday, another through Friday through Sunday. And you probably need to split those control charts. And of course, you can use control charts in healthcare. Here's a percent of readmissions to a hospital. They're running about 2.66% readmission on a monthly basis. One month they had one just above the upper control limit of 5.6%. So we could go on and on and on with the examples. The key thing is you can use control charts anywhere you have a repeatable process you want to improve. They give you insights nothing else does. And to paraphrase Dr. Donald Wheeler, anyone who doesn't use control charts is at a disadvantage to those who do.